Yeah. You can close it if you want. You can close it if you want. Really? Um, I closed it on my bedroom in the little porch. You can go around and. Hi, Mike. So I'll make you the host. Do you know how to hit record? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I just paused it till you guys start the meeting. So hang on. Okay. All right, you're good. You see the top, it's just a paused recording. So once you guys call the meeting to order, just hit record. Okay. Awesome. Have a good meeting. All right. Thanks a lot. No problem. Okay. All right. Is everybody here? Who signed in as guest? Is that? Is that Susan as guest? Okay. All right. Um, it's 7.02 p.m. Uh, I call this meeting of the um, Maurice's Campground uh, Ops Working Group uh, to order. Um, let me just bring up the agenda again, sorry. Oh. Okay. Okay, sorry, that was my... No, that's fine. Okay, uh, the first thing on the agenda is a SCORE uh, model canvas discussion. Um, basically, I met with SCORE which is a nonprofit group that, you know, advises businesses. Um, and it was just a kind of an initial meeting, introduced to them what we were looking at doing, which is, you know, narrowing down the uh, different options for the town to operate, you know, to potentially operate the campground uh, if the purchase goes forward and to, to develop a criteria to narrow those things down um and make a recommendation uh they suggested um that we look over this um this uh small business canvas that they've created and i can bring that up on the screen here and we can kind of discuss it and see if it really is suitable for us oh i forgot to hit the record did i hit record it's recording now Okay, can everyone unmute themselves and mute themselves? Is that working? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can okay. you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so uh, I'll bring up on the screen the, the score model canvas and we can kind of look at that and we can discuss it as a group. One second, I'm just adapting to being the host and having the... your screen. Okay, hold on one second. Let me just get that out of here. All right. Sorry, you guys, not the most savvy. I've got a lot of stuff on my desktop that I'm trying to try to fool. Okay, screen. Okay. Okay, you guys all see that there. So I'm not sure how much of this is useful. They thought it would be good for us to kind of go to go back to take a step back and look at, you know, the sort of 
um, basic value proposition that the campground offers and what it takes to accomplish that and to sort of answer these questions that are laid out here. And that would sort of inform the questions that we ask ourselves about uh, the benefits of uh, or, or detriments of doing uh, any one of the options that we've the, that we've laid out to sort of develop the criteria after we've sort of gone through these and sort of answered these very basic questions. Um, Farouk there, okay. And, uh, and so we can kind of go through them one by one, I guess, and, you know, see if, you know, they, some of them are pretty simple. I mean, um, but I don't know if all of them apply to what we're trying to do, you know, it, I, I guess because we're trying to just sort of discern these, there's basically three options. And for anybody who's not been to one of our meetings before, we've, we've sort of narrowed it down to three basic options for the campground operations. And uh, that is basically um, the town could lease the campground to a single operator in whole, and that operator would then pay the town a set lease amount through an RFP where we would do a request for proposals and uh, you know we would take the, the best bid from that and there'd be a minimum amount set, follow procurement law in, in that respect, and they would have a scope of work that they would carry out uh, in return. So. Uh, that's one option. The second option would be that the town could hire an operator to manage the campground, a private opera, like a management company to operate the campground. They would then be in charge of staffing it and everything like that. And in that scenario, we would pay them a set amount and receive the, pro the profits after the management company has been paid and all the expenses are paid. And then the third option would be that the town actually utilizes town staff to operate the campground. And so those are the three basic options. And without getting into, you know, our personal opinions right now, we're really just trying to uh, go through the criteria and sort of narrow down which ones to, uh, to, what to recommend uh, going forward. And um, so uh, I'm sorry I sent this to everyone a little bit late. I thought I had sent this out, but I had saved it into my draft emails and I didn't realize it till before the meeting that I hadn't sent out this model canvas to everyone in the room. And I don't know if anybody's had a chance to read it um, or look it over. And if anybody has any opinion about whether it's useful or not, or whether we should proceed uh, to answer these before moving on to what we were doing before. I just thought it was a general template initially, but we can go through quickly and maybe toss things out right away if you want to just go through them piece by piece. I think it could be useful. Yeah. Um, is Farouk on here too? Let me give him a call. We're in different locations. Okay. I, I, I admitted him, but I don't see him on the screen. Uh, I, I'll turn my camera on. Sorry. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Oh, there Hello. he is. That might just be because of my share screen. I can't see people who are not video. Right. Okay. Sure. So, um, yeah, why don't we go through them? Um, so can we use partners to reach customers? I think actually we should probably start with the value proposition questions, um, even though it's not left to right, um, because everything sort of still leads to those, to those things. So, you know, what products or services are we offering? Well, I think if we are the actual ones who are, uh, either hiring an operator or running the campground ourselves, um, we'd be off, it's pretty obvious what kind of services we'd be operating. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I guess I don't wanna just talk. So if anybody else wants to, to speak, otherwise I'll just talk the whole meeting. <laughs> so I joined late. Uh, I have to say, I don't have enough context for what we're looking at here. Uh, it, it's a template for looking at either of the, any of those three business models and try to put some something. So template, basically like I met with SCORE, which is a nonprofit that sort of um, assists small businesses in planning and 
and um, and advising small businesses. And they re I explained what we were doing. They recommended that we answer these really basic questions in this model, business model canvas, um, to sort of inform the 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 more uh, the more um, pinpointed questions in our criteria. So I don't know, you know, I think we, what we're just doing now is sort of going through these and, and deciding if, if they're worthwhile questions for us to answer and well, if they pertain to what we're doing. It seems very, very generic. So, you know, what do we, you know, like uh, customer relationships, how do we keep and grow customers? I don't know that that's a very well, relevant. We're we're starting at the middle one for it. Value. I understand that. I understand that. But I'm just saying as a, you know, coming in late, I see this and I'm seeing a lot of general things that may not be applicable to what we're doing, but that's just my thinking. That's kind of how I felt about it when I got it from them. They sent it to me after I met with them and I just felt like I should bring it to this group and see uh, if it was worthwhile or if there's questions in here that are worthwhile for us to answer uh, bef before we before I dismiss it. So, so okay, no, before dismissing, I wasn't suggesting we dismiss. What I was suggesting is we take this as a starting point and make it focus to us. So for instance, you know, right now it's not clear that uh, some of these things apply. So we prune them out, make, make this basically a subset, a more focused subset of this, that's our template. And then we evaluate our three options uh, right. for each. But okay. just starting with what it is, I feel, I feel like it's not a real good fit. Yeah, that's how I felt as well. So maybe we can just sort of tease out the ones that don't apply, and get rid of them. Good idea. Focus on the keep, ones. So keep and grow customers stands out as, you know, not, not a concern for us. You agree? Well, well, it depends. If we're operating a campground, you do want to keep them. Well, yeah, but they're not going anywhere, are they? Well, I, I talked at Salem, and before they used Reserve America, they didn't fill their campground. I mean, I think Wellfleet will, but I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. Right. In other words, uh, uh, do you see us uh, evaluating options on how to grow our customers? I don't. I mean, there are bigger, more important things to do, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess it really, that sort of depends on how the town, if the town leases it out to a an operator, then that's not really pertinent. But if the town is hiring a management company or running it itself, then it does become more pertinent because then we're sort of liable for the profits and losses of the campground. Gotcha. So in that respect, I think it does, but not if we go with option A, which would- Got be it. So at least in some cases it does, so it stays. Right. Um, anything else that stands out as not fitting? Just as you know, fifty thousand foot level. Um, I think to reach partners, customers. Who are our partners and suppliers, and how do we work with them? I, I'm not sure. That yeah. Answer that at this point, or that that makes much sense. So. Um, we can... So to keep take maybe key partners off the table from the for the template. Maybe I'll just go like this here. Key resources. Okay, that's important. Although would the, a management company be the key partner? <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, but I, I think we leave the first one. Can we use partners to reach customers? And deliver solutions? Sorry about that. Um, if we, uh, Sort of keep the question, can we use partners to reach customers and deliver solutions or enhance our value? If we leave that in there, um, I think that could pertain to each one and we could answer that with each different thing because even if, in all three scenarios, that first one would apply, but I don't mm -hmm. necessarily know, we don't know who our partners would be, you know what I mean, for the second. Right. So, Sales. Maybe sales channel stands out as you know do you really need to sell this or does it sell it's been selling itself for the last you know 50 years well we might look at it right now that our customers right now are the voters and we want those voters to vote to support um the maurice campground purchase 
right? As a business, if, if that's what, if we go to the value propositions and um, why will not customers, but why will voters vote for this instead of saying, um, no, we, that's too expensive. We can't handle that or something like that. So that's definitely value proposition. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't really thought about it like that. And like I think of our customer is the voters at this particular moment. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, but if you're considering the, if you're using this to compare the three business models, right, then the cust at that point, I don't know that the voter is the customer for it. I mean, it's the customer is whoever stays in the campground, right? I, I think the um, purpose of this is for us to just exercise some thinking, but not this would not become our criteria sheet. I think this would help us uh, build the questions that then come from part two is how I'm guessing, Mike, okay. that, that your meeting with SCORE went, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I think that you're right in one respect of like what our group is trying to do or what this, yeah. what, what the, what the, uh, the overall working group is, is set forth to do. But I like as a whole, I think that's true that our, we're trying to reach the voters and inform them on the subject. But I think Farouk might be right. And when we when we're doing this, we're sort of trying to create like a, a somewhat unbiased um, recommendation about which which business, which which model the town uses to run it. And in that respect, I think we can kind of take that question out and sort of uh, think about that in the overall context, but not necessarily answer it as it pertains to the recommendations, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but I think if we are gonna look at it, it should probably be like, who are the customers of the campground? Because then again, if we're doing option B or C, which is we're liable for the profit and loss, then we might be thinking about those things. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if we are leasing it out, then, you know, what's the value of, of that lease? It's kind of based on, you know, who the customers are and whether they're targeted and whether they even need to be, um, need to be targeted given the size of the campground and, and the popularity of, of the, the place. So, and also, you know, um, I was kind of thinking where it was saying uh, the key activities that we need to do. Oh, the sales channels things. Um, we kind of eliminated that, right? Yeah. But uh, at the same time, I kind of wonder if we should look at something similar to that in that like, is there a potential for more revenue in the campground that's being generated right now? You know, um, because that's one thing I think um, that if you look at, you know, their rates and, and what they're charging right now, uh, is there room for a higher revenue stream mm -hmm. than, what's, than what's currently being brought in? You know, they may not need to raise prices because they own the campground outright and therefore yeah. keep so, very competitive rates. So that would go under the revenue stream box here. So the ones that are intuitively obvious that we need them is, let's start from top, go right, and then uh, okay. bottom. So yeah. right. I don't, uh, and if we, if we were physically in the same place, we could put red circles or something or you know on each of these to say which ones we wanna remove, but okay, let me go first. I'd remove yeah. a key partner. I would keep key activity, key resources, value proposition. Uh, I would get rid of customer relationships, sales channel, uh, and customer segment. I'd keep cost structure and revenue stream. Uh, if anybody wants to go next. Uh, did you get that? Uh, yeah, okay. I kind of <laughs> got it. You're a little okay. quick for me. <laughs> okay, I'll, okay, I'll do it again. So, 
key, key partner, get rid of, key activities, keep, value proposition, keep, key resources, keep, customer relationships, no, sales channel, no, customer segment, no, cost structure, yes, revenue streams, yes. Okay, so let's see. Why don't I? Uh, so that's five things, right? So, one, two, three, four. Yeah, see. yeah, five things. See if I can highlight any of these things. Oh, you can <laughs> change the color of the font, no? What are we in? Yeah, uh, okay. Oh, it's a PDF. It's a PDF, yeah. I can change still, it? yeah. No, I, it's not uh, letting me do that either. Okay. okay. Oh, you can, you can, you can like draw circles and stuff on it. Uh, no. I might be able to actually open it with Keynote and then. Well, why don't we take, uh, here, I'll take notes. I'm on a multi-screen thingy, so let me take notes. Um, so. Okay, let's see. I knew. So, for, so um, I'll note down my suggestion to get rid of, uh, so that I'm just making the list of what to get rid of now. Key partner. Oops, uh, you removed. Oh, it's okay. Hold on. I'm going to just get this up on Keynote. Or rather, no, rather than get rid of, I'm just going to list the other way around because we want to mentally converge on what we're keeping, right? So, key activities. Then, uh, key resources. Then, value proposition. And we can reorder these when we're done, but a value, then forget customer, whatever, or a customer and sales and partner, get rid of those and cost structure. Okay. Can you guys see this? Is it big enough or? Uh, That's better. That's better. Revenue streams. Okay. So let's start with, I'll, I'll put these in the chat window and you tell me if uh, anybody would like to suggest any changes. So these are the ones I'm suggesting we keep. And okay. is there anything not here that anybody wants to keep? Is there anything here that you want to get rid of? Sorry, some typos in there. So those are the things you want to keep. Keep. Okay. And then get rid of um, everything I think, else. I think maybe we should keep uh, the first question in key partner. Um, <laughs> What do other people think? Key part, in other words, how important is, I see the point that if, if I'm reminded that in at least one of the three business models, we are partnering with a company that is the management company running it. Sure, uh, even if we're leasing it, we're it, still partnering we're with still a company. And then also, even if we're running it as a town, we're partnering with, gotcha. uh, with with the townspeople really, we're partnering with the staff, we're partnering. Agreed, yeah. So, so I'm adding key partner, um, so, so I've added one more. Um, and if anybody have, wants to take anything out or change anything else, please let us know. No, I think that's good. I don't think we need customer segment and I don't think we need I'm not sure if customer relationships make sense to examine, like uh, what types of delivery service support and other interactions do people expect? So that might be pertinent in that, like when we're doing this analysis, like are we able to, in these three scenarios, provide those services? Like, let's say the town operates it and says like, well, we're going to operate it and we're only going to operate the trailer park section and not the store and not the cabins, then there's a certain certain aspect of what people expect in that campground that would not be able to be delivered in that scenario. You know, so, so which box are we talking about right now? Customer relationships. Um, 
the second why, question? Yeah, why can't that be under key activities, whether you're operating the campground, whether you're operating or value proposition, I don't know where, but I don't know. It's, it's, okay. it's customer relationships is more like, what do I have to do to keep connected with my customers, make, keep making them you know, know we still exist and come back and so on? Sure, yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. Yeah, if we can just kind of, we can kind of wrap that up into key activities. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we've got a few areas and now, that's giving us uh, some structure. So for each area now, we we write down, you know, for instance, key activities. What are the key activities? The, you know, campground, the uh, store. store, you know, so, so as, a, as an example, we'd, but key, so we'll have to see, does something change in one, like are key activities gonna change from one business model to another? I mean, I think they could because in, in the scenario where the town, if, if the town were to operate, the only requirement of the town is that it operate the, the seasonal trailer park area. Yeah. So there's no requirement of the town to op operate a store. There's no requirement of the town to operate the campground for yeah. day camping or the cabins for rentals. So in a way, I mean, that's kind of a simple solution for the town to just hire a manager and collect the rents from that and whatever that you know whatever that that remainder is after you pay that manager to to do that and manage those cabins but you you kind of have to at that point analyze you know whether it would not just be more valuable to just lease it to someone and collect uh a, a a set amount for the whole campground. Mm -hmm. So I think in key activities, it, it's kind of pertinent to just answer it. Like what are the activities of the campground and, um, and whether we would even be able to meet those in the three scenarios, right? Yeah. Like how challenging would it be for the town? Because in the end, this is a town venture. Would it be for the town to meet those? It, whatever scenario it chooses, the difficulty of, of doing those key activities exists, right? So. So shall we just say those key activities like taking reservations and yeah, just I mean, I think it's, Yeah, I think it's very, this can be pretty simple. I mean, this isn't really, this is sort of a roadmap for us to, to so, go. Like we can on the chat, so I'm, I'm going to write down reservations, um, office hours. Wait, know. these are key activities? Yeah, well, whoever's operating the campground. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, those yeah. are sort of fundamental. And I don't know, everybody else can pipe in other fundamental things. I'll just put it on the chat here. Well, I think it's... Oh, well, you know, no, just speak. I'll take notes and I'll, one of us can, you know, I can put it in the chat. So just speak, I'm taking notes. So office hours, there was reservations, office hours, then other activity, what about yeah, uh, the uh, the running the store? Yep, so the purchasing, managing. Purchasing. Staff. Cleaning. Yep. Trash uh, pickup. Well, this could be a big list. It yeah, could. but we're supposed to focus on key activities. So I'm wondering okay. if it should be more generic than okay. every, every aspect of- Yeah, of running a, yeah. You know what uh, I mean? It's yeah, like, so reservations, office hours are uh, definitely- Managing campgrounds. <laughs> Me uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, hiring staff, managing staff. Um, cabin rentals. And uh, how is that different from reservations? That was the first one. Is it the same thing? Or? I guess it's not different. No. Okay. Reservations is the same. So, reserv so far we have reservations, office hours, purchasing, managing campground, and managing staff. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, you didn't miss anything, but there's probably more. 
Uh, maintenance. Oh yeah. Shut down. Uh, wait, wait. Ma season. Maintenance is the same as grounds and maintenance, right? It's one thing. Yeah, grounds keeping and maintenance. Okay. What was that, Nancy? Shut down. End of season. Oh yes. Or I guess open and closing. Yeah. Open startup. Uh, seasonal startup and shutdown. Yep. Yeah. That's a good start. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, when you're, if you, if you, if, if there's nothing else, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Uh, nothing uh, else right now that I can think of. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. Um. Do you want do you want to start with value proposition? That's what I thought at first when I first brought this up is that it, it makes sense to kind of everything kind of leads into the value proposition. So okay. uh, why don't we just move to that now? Well, whoever uh, value to the town, right? Or the towns? I think maybe. it's yeah, I think it's uh what a, it, it's both. It's like because it says what products and services are we offering? So I would say nightly uh, and weekly um, rentals and camping facilities, as well as seasonal trailer rentals and space. Camping. Seasonal. Wait, um, so are these one item nightly, weekly camping and seasonal? Trailer renters, I think they're sep separate, right? Separate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Seasonal trailer, uh, trailer, trailer rentals. Rentals, and they also so it's two things. They rent the and space they out. lease. They lease out the spaces, and then they also have trailers that are owned by the campground that they just rent out to usually seasonal workers. Yeah. Yeah. So you can say lodging is the service. <laughs> Yeah, service for offering is lodging. Okay. White, nightly, <laughs> weekly, and oh, it, I see what lodging. you're saying. Yeah, uh, nightly, weekly, and seasonal lodging. That's I like that. That's good. Yeah. Uh, then uh, also goods and services. No, probably not. Well, yeah, there's services too. There's like garbage pickup or garbage, and groundskeeping and stuff like that but they're, then they're offering also products out of the store uh so uh um, like what do you call these things uh, like the general store concept right uh, uh, how should, uh, pro, uh value proposition uh, just camp, camp store camp right? store yeah convenient camp, camp store convenient Camp store. Okay. Um, That's basically the products and services. Yeah. I mean, okay. And retail so, goods, you know. That's. What, that, what was that? Oh, what about the. Retail sorry. goods and retail goods, I guess you could put in. Yeah. The, well, that's know, the camp store, right? The camp yeah, store. Kind of subheading it or something like that. But yeah. Um, so. Retail goods, is that what you said? Yeah, I think so. Okay. What about the the Batteries. propane propane tanks? Is that that's under that? retail? Uh, yeah, that would be under retail. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then you know the services they offer are kind of included in the camping, right? So you don't really have to yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to offer that separately. Yeah. Okay. Separate offering. Okay. So, so I think is, we can move on from that. Okay, let me put that in down. Value proposition. Okay, then. This is uh, actually turning out to be more helpful than I initially expected it to be. I, I, I mean. I'm yeah, this is good. Very good. Um, let me ask. Uh, uh, should we start with the uh, the revenue stream? No, uh, because the, Farik, there's more value propositions. Oh, the places you'll go. By Dr. Seuss. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good value proposition. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So, uh, what we, problems are we solving? 
We're solving um, oh, yes. um, workers, workers lodging. What do you call that? Seasonal help. Yeah, seasonal housing. Um, I guess workforce we're solving housing? the yes, job. yes. Yeah, workforce housing. We're solving, uh, you know, the. Okay, so I'd say let's take seasonal out of nightly, weekly lodging because that has a whole other dimension to it, right? Um, so that isn't that yeah. the biggest. In other words, if you look at nightly, weekly versus the value proposition provided by for seasonal workers, the town gets a bigger bang. You know, out of providing housing for the seasonal workers, isn't well, that what's I, motivating a lot of us? I think so, but I think if we just go through the value proposition questions one by one. So the first one, what products and services are we offering? We answer that with ah. nightly, weekly, and seasonal lodging. So okay. really, that head should say products and services, you know what I mean? And then I the see. second one would be, what problems are we solving? Well, one is affordable accommodation in Wellfleet. There really isn't very much of that. So it, it does allow people of modest means to vacation here. So that's one thing. Okay, problems solved as a subheading. And, yeah. the, uh, and uh, uh, the first one was what, affordable housing? Well, workforce housing first. Workforce yeah. housing. Yeah. Which workforce? One? Workforce housing. Yeah. Workforce housing. Okay. And next one. Retaining uh, affordable um, rental, about, uh, uh, affordable vacation opportunities for in short term Wellfleet. rental. Yeah. I think affordable vacation opportunities in Wellfleet to retaining them because there really aren't very many places for people of modest means to come. Mm -hmm. so that's, I think, a valuable. But it's a it's valuable to the visitor who's coming. How is it helping the town? It's a value to humanity. That we're just okay. saying what value. All right, all right. We're just yeah, we're just outlining all the values, not just. <laughs> Not just not just what it puts it down, but I think there is some value in 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 not being ex so exclusive that like uh, uh, people abso people absolutely. can't afford to come here and bring their families here um, yeah. for a short stay. So there's some value in that. And then I would say that we're uh, uh, offsetting the debt service would be another problem that we're solving of buying the buying the property. Oh, yes. What do you mean by offsetting the debt service? So when we bought, if we buy the property, we're bonding this out over 30 years, most yep. likely. And every year we're going to have debt service payments. And so yep. by receiving the revenue from the campground, we offset those <sighs> debt service payments, which is one of the primary goals, I think, yeah. the select board had in mind when we agreed to to do this as a board was that we looked at all all the different aspects and thought well yeah you know, so so for instance a criteria might be what percentage you know of the debt service is it covering 100% 50% right. exactly yeah. Yeah. okay um so i if anybody else know any uh problems, problems we're solving by this I guess we can move on from that one. Okay, so I think the net rest of the questions in value proposition don't seem like they're particularly useful. Well, the next one, what's the value of solving these problems? So we said, what problems we are solving, what's the value? I think they're kind of implicit, you know, like uh, workforce housing, everybody knows it's, a, you know, there's value. We don't need to say more. It might make sense to spell it out though. I know it's okay. simple, but it might make sense so, to just say it. Okay, so problem solved and the, I want to combine it rather than. No, keep them separate. So what if we say, what is the value of solving these problems? Well, obviously workforce housing is one of our biggest problems. So that has, pro we can sort of rank the value in a way. So we have serious issues with workforce housing and people being able to live here and work 
in the local economy for the summer. One of the values is that businesses will be able to remain open. Right, they'd close if they didn't have workforce. Yeah, some, I mean, there is some contribution to that. I mean, I know that a lot of people live in there in the summer that that work jobs in, in Wellfleet. So I don't know what percentage or anything, but. So the, fir the, the first, first value of solving these problems is that businesses will be able to house their workforce. Right, yeah. I might not say be able to, but it will uh, in, I don't know how I would say it because not all businesses will benefit. And, right, you can't guarantee and you know, supply and yeah. demand may not match up, but, uh, uh, but it's-, it's uh, It will it's, relieve small business challenges yeah. related to housing employees. Uh, not saying anything different, not really. Business will be, uh, more options for businesses to house their workforce. Um, yeah, well, we, I might be getting caught up, so. What's that, Lara? More opportunities for businesses to house their workforce? Yeah, that's, that's a less definite thing than saying they will be able to, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, that's number one uh, value, retaining affordable vacation opportunities that keeps Wellfleet from becoming, uh, you know, elite displaced, you know, keeps yeah. the character of the town. So how do we say yeah. that? Maintains a diverse character. Maintains yeah. a diverse Helps maintain a diverse character. Character. Uh, of whom? Um, of who? Just, you can just leave it at that. You can okay. just leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. Um, offsetting the debt service payments. That's a real obvious one. How do we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it, it, it will benefit taxpayers by reducing the burden. Aha. Uh -huh. Of their tax bill. That's a good one. Everybody likes that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's problem solved. And I think the rest of this, the bottom two bullets, why will they, well, why would customers buy this versus somebody else? Uh, I don't think we need to, what do you think? The, the last two, do we need them? I don't think the last one is one. No. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. there's only one more. So we don't need to, you know. I don't think we need that. I mean, it's okay, pretty so obvious. All right. So if <laughs> there's if nowhere there's out. No... <laughs> so, yeah. I don't think we need to say that though. Should I should I put down the uh, value value proposition as after my revisions uh, and you know based on the categorization? Ah, it doesn't indent properly. I see. So oh, products, a, you know, Farouk, if you have this typed out, you can just send it out after. Yeah, sure, and, sure. You know, okay. That way All we right. don't lose this chat somehow or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, what's, uh, let's see. And so this, the choices left are key resources, key partners, cost structure, revenue stream. Which one do you want to do next? I think maybe we should do... I feel like they put cost structure and revenue streams at the bottom so you would do them last. I don't know how intentional that was. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so so we, between key resources and key partners, uh, what's more significant? Resources seems like, what, what's the, let's see, what does it say? What physical, intellectual, human, financial resources are needed to deliver on your value proposition? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I think we should probably- what's it, What is it gonna take? Yeah, what's it going to take? Mm -hmm. um, 
Okay, so take um, a staff of, and I can get this number. I'm I, I'm about to reach out to the Gauthiers just to get some some data, but I wanted to wait until we had a good meeting where we yeah. could sort so, of like those kinds of questions. So in terms of staff. So in terms of you know uh, big picture numbers. How many people employed full time? How many people employed part time? Does that give a, enough of a granularity? Where we don't define full time, obviously forty hours a week. Part time, let's assume, give or take twenty hours a week. Yep, and manager. Uh, okay. Um, so, how many people does it take to manage it? I mean, maybe it's just one. Well, well manager is a people to me. You know, we're not talking about roles like who does, who's the janitor, who's the gardener, etc. But just how many full-time positions, how many part-time right. positions, and then you know, if we want to break it down, we can do it in the next level. One manager, you know, twenty grounds, whatever it is, right? Yeah, that's fine. It, it's only going to be three to five people. Yeah. Something so. Like so staff of uh, three to five people? Well, a manager is a key staff. You do want to distinguish that. Okay, so uh, manage, so you, you're going to have one man, you know, no position should be, you know, such that if he gets hit by a truck that, you know, you don't have somebody running the place, so. Most of the you, campgrounds have one manager. Oh, wow. And then okay. other office people. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so a manager plus a staff of let's say four. But I'll I'll get I'll get the number from the Gauthiers what they use. Yeah, full time. And seasonal. And wait, uh, so there's a certain number that's so once the campground closes down, you don't need anybody, right? Nobody. No. Okay. Uh, Full-time and seasonal. Uh, seasonal being the... You would just say full-time. You'd say seasonal, full-time, and part-time, but not year-round. Okay. S seasonal, full, or the, slash part-time. So, well, I wanted to separate, you know, how many full-time and how many part-time. We don't we know that yet. yet. Okay. We, just find, we can find that. I'm going to find that number out. I just wrote that down as a question to ask. Um, we'd want to have that level of precision, but for now, I'll just say a manager plus a staff of four people, full and part time and seasonal, full slash part time and seasonal. And then we'll put down a specific breakdown of full versus part sure. when, we, when we have it. And Mike, when you ask them about their employees, you're going to um, distinguish between the store and the campground. I don't think they distinguish that uh, really. They, I think everyone goes back and forth. Um, but I, but I mean, ask like, how many people need to be working at the store at a time to be open. But I think because of the nature of a campground, the people are in the store. Yeah, if they're not taking reservations. And then they send, if they need to someone from someone from the store, and then I know somebody is uh, lives there that usually is like kind of security at night, mm. and never to just basically be eyes on what's going on or if anybody needs anything. So, um, yeah. So I I guess how many staff members do they employ how many are in the store or i guess the store hours might help you with that too hours yeah okay so that's all part of what we're doing right here in key resources what it takes but i would say once we know with the the real thing is you know the, the real number is how many staff it takes to run the segments part-time and full-time. And if we wanna tease out the store, I mean, I personally think that uh, we should probably set this up as four scenarios rather than three, because when we do this next stage, because 
there is one scenario where the town could just not operate the store and only do what's required by the purchase and sale agreement. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise, I think we should assume that it's all three sections running. You know, do we know, do we know how much of a money maker the store is? Yeah. Like, if it's a huge money maker, then it'd be kind of not very smart to not run a store. I mean, yeah. I work and you know i mean we can just do three scenarios where you assume all three sections are where, where all three parts of this business are operating the only thing is that i think just because we're only required to do that the seasonal uh trailer rental section of it by the purchase and sale agreement that we should probably have that in there as well um as an option that that's all you know, mm. uh, uh, this, yeah, you yeah. may be right. I mean, maybe it's just silly to do that. You know, mm. uh, I think if you were to lease it or hire a management company, I, I don't think it makes much sense. That'd to... be that'd be that'd be like running a bar and uh, a restaurant and not serving alcohol. You know, I mean, you know, yeah. it's the big money maker. And you see my analogy, right? Uh, unless you tell yeah. me that the numbers we have says, yeah, it's you know. Uh, you know, you make some money, but it's not a lot, then you could say, well, you know, let's not have the headache. But if it's a clear money maker, then, you know, we should yeah. just make it simple in our, our analysis. The benefit of the camp store is that there's guaranteed business from the campers. So exactly. Um, and it's the convenience and it's a value proposition to it's part of the value proposition. What people yeah. expect if they're staying and living in a campground that they have access yeah. to ice and water and whatever yeah sandwiches or chips or some basic provisions you know so yeah. by the way i see karen uh, uh asked to uh, yeah, something do on you, is, can people unmute themselves let me I, I can't see everyone when we're like this when i'm sharing a screen like this so karen i have a deli a person taking orders for lobsters cooking lobsters and selling beer and wine Propane tanks, someone fills them, uh, stocking shelves. Yep. Hi, Mike. I'm just trying to help out. Oh, no, that's great. Yeah, I didn't see the message until after, but. No, it's okay. I just sent it. I couldn't figure out how to send it. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I think you're right. I go in there quite a bit because it's not too far from my house, and they usually have someone working the counter. That person usually goes back and they've been shorthanded the last couple of years. So, you know, who knows, but you, you're, you're right. They definitely have a couple people in that little kitchen section and somebody working the counter and usually somebody stocking shelves too. But I know that they also send those people out for campground needs when something's going on or most things are operating in the store. Yeah. And it's kind of like, what do staff do when they're not in the store? in a campground, you know, besides just kind of patrol the area. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. <coughs> so I will get those, I will get the numbers of staff that they utilize and the breakdown of that as far as like the pay and everything like that when I talk to them. Besides, besides the staff, are there in, in, is there anything else in key resources? I'm reading the what physical, intellectual, human, financial resources. Are, ah, well, financial you resources. Take some financial resources. Yeah. Are, like stock the store. Yeah. Stock the propane. Uh, so uh, funds. Yeah. Funds to stock store and. Uh, propane and uh, and you know just the general you know uh, the the seasonal startup costs they must be yeah. like you know go yeah, uh, yeah. seasonal startup yeah. costs as well as you know operational uh, key key resources uh, seasonal startup costs i guess operational costs are covered by the income, we hope. So that's just not at the startup. Not at There's the a little startup. lag. There's a little time yeah. lag. Okay, seasonal start. So so seasonal startup should not be a cost. It's only the first time startup cost, right? So 
it's whatever everything from you know funds to stock the store propane plus you know uh, opening up uh, for the next year uh, for the right. first year right. right so assuming this is a first year business in a way opening opening costs yeah okay uh Okay, uh, what what else is needed to get this, you know, um, started? Uh, I would say reservation system of some si some sort, you know, um, but maybe that's part of the opening cost. But no, it's a good one to call out because it's an important one. Um, it's going to have some cost uh, associated, obviously, and. So yeah, no, I think we should we should definitely call it out. Uh, it is a key uh, physical slash intellectual or something, you know. Uh, it is. Resource. It is. I, I will say that I, I spoke to someone at Winter Island, Salem, and uh, she said the best thing they ever did was go to Reserve America, and their campground was different from Maurice's because they didn't they don't fill up in the summer. They fill up at Halloween, um, but now they're full up all season. Okay, yeah. Okay. So it's definitely a resource uh, that we're going to have to expand. And then let's go back to our uh, value props yeah. for a second and just see what resources we need for each value proposition that we've identified. And maybe that's it. So seasonal lodging, can, camp store. So we've got to get, we got the goods covered. Uh, housing, vacation. Uh, yeah, no, I think I think we have it covered. The value proposition, anyways. Okay. Key activities: we got reservation, uh, office hours, purchasing. Oh, what about uh, accountant? Uh, right. Uh, I mean, we're running a business here, and. Somebody's got to do the accounting yeah, book, for it. Bookkeeping, I would say, bookkeeping and accounting. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. bookkeeping. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, like, what does an LLC need? Uh, well, they need a bank account. Um, is there, is there going to be, is there a website right now? No, but that would be the reservation system essentially would be the yeah, website. Right now, I believe it's all just phone calls and a ledger. Hmm. Pretty old school. Yeah, think, if, the, if the town has it, the town will have a link and mm -hmm. reservations will hopefully be separate. You know, I mean, within yeah. that. Should, where I was going is, should we have a key resource be a website? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I think that would probably fit in there, and we would. I think anyone who is doing it would consider that a key yeah. a resource. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Whether it's an operator or, I doubt people are going to continue to. If we hired an operator or a manager, I, I doubt they would continue to do it by landline only and walk in, um, mm -hmm. but you never know. <laughs> it is, I think it fills well, up all the time, so. so. So the reservation system will provide the online reservation capability, but website, I was thinking more like pro providing people with an ability to see what they would get if they, you know, uh, stayed there. And for people who are already staying there, sort of, you know, let them you know, know what's going on, you know, uh, if there's something not working, uh, uh, whatever, you know, announcements. It's that kind, kind of thing. funny, Farouk, because that's sort of going into the customer relations thing that we have kind of, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. list, but I, you know, it might be pertinent to actually, you know, as a key resource to identify the customer relationships at this point too. Yeah, but if I, if, if you, if you ask my opinion, the Place I would put the website is under key resource as a yes. Does it enable customer relations? Absolutely. But if I were to put it in one of those two boxes, I'd put it under. Oh key. yeah, it's definitely a key resource. But what it's serving is mm -hmm. customer relations, mm -hmm. right? It's a resource to serve 
uh, I, I guess well, it's a value proposition also. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay so keep that deleted. I was just. Anything else in terms of key resources? I don't think so now. All right, let me put that. Oh, I guess I, um, I will send an email later, but uh, just for the people who are immediately here. Okay. Okay, then we've got key partners. If you're say, doing cost structure and revenue streams last, then key partners. Uh, well, this should be easy. Um, yeah. You know, this is the management company uh, or the uh, lessee. What, what do you call yeah. the party oh, that leases? Lessee. -E -E, lessee. Lessee company. Um, the town. Um, Absolutely. Well, wait, yeah. wait, wait. Hang on. The town. I mean, okay. Those are the key. Yeah, those are the players, right? So right. management. Yeah. Okay. Town. What? What else? Uh, uh, oh, uh, waste disposal. Or is that getting too specific? That's getting know. too specific. I that's think we can go on. Just a contract of. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, because you can have all kinds of contractors. That's okay. a key resource, right? So. Okay. So. Is that, is that is that all the key partners? The players, if you will, town, lessee company, management company. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. All right. Okay. Notice how we're speeding up now. That's good. Yeah. Everybody's deep. Okay, now we have uh, cost structure. Okay, what is it? what are the costs to deliver our business model? Which costs are fixed, which are variable, which can be reduced by economies of scale as we grow? Wow, that's a good one. But did I see something about cost where? Uh, oh, value of problems solved, that was, no. Did I see something about cost somewhere that we did already? No, no. okay. Take. Okay. All right. So let's start with the, what are the costs to deliver? So I think costs, yep. Bruce, maybe we should just answer just to write it out who the customers are. Who the customers are. Okay. Like in customer segment, I don't know if we chopped that off, but we, we did, but we can bring it back if you feel. But maybe that's... actually it's, it's taken care of in what problems we're solving. Yep. But it might make sense to just spell it out. Sure, just sure. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's do that. Uh, cust so uh, obviously the, the uh, se seasonal workers. Yep. Because when you start going into, okay, who are our customers, then we start going into revenue streams. Yeah. Next one, it makes sense to look at what, who the customers are and is there potential for more revenue growth Sure. So, Seasonal workers, then the other one were the campers. Campers, yep. Um, well, seasonal campers and transient campers. Yeah. Should I separate them or season, seasonal and transitional in one? Uh, yeah, transient. In, in, transient. in, in, in one, one bullet? No, two. two okay. Yeah. Okay. Transient campers are actually seasonal are the more important ones. So put those first seasonal campers. These, those are the regular customers, mm -hmm. transient customers, uh, transient campers. Okay. Yep. And then you have like, uh, like um, cottage rental mm. renters. Uh, yeah, cot cottage rent, uh, renters. Um, and you have the store customers, which consist of the campers, all users of the campground, as well as anybody, uh, right? Yeah, as well as the general public. Okay, so retail, how about just retail store customers? Or, or do you want to? Because separate them because you're going to carry more stuff for the campers. Right, or the, at least they do, but maybe there's some some opportunity to grow so, revenue outside of just the camp. I got it. To the store. Yeah. So, so retail store customers include uh, all of the above. 
um, plus uh, everybody else. <laughs> I, I think know. maybe just general, uh, general public for retail for. Yeah, instead of yeah, so just say general public uh, uh, because because we've already covered the the, uh, the first four type sure. of uh, customers. So we general have, public. They have a liquor license and stuff yeah, like that in there. General, so. ge uh, or just general public shopping at retail store. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else or should I send this? No, I think that's good. I think it's pretty simple and it's down on paper now. So it's good. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Michael DeVasto, yep. can I speak to this? Yes. This. Uh, uh, John Gothia told me that they currently have a manager who runs the place. Do we know who that is? Um, I do know it, her. I don't know. I don't know. It's her. not one of the three brothers. It's somebody else. It's a woman. Right. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's definitely true, Richard. And um, I I I have. Um, Yeah, there's there's a separate manager that manages the daily ops in there with them. So, and as we look forward to this whole operation going forward three or four years, there is currently no general store in South Wellfleet, and this could evolve into a year-round business store servicing mm -hmm. South Wellfleet. It, it could it, eventually it, have it the post so. office in that location, because as the town that area grows. We need to have more services for those people. Yeah, that's that's a value proposition. That's right? definitely yes. a value proposition. Yeah, so you Wait, can we have convenient camp store, but it's more than just the camp store. Uh, and general store for uh, for South Wellfleet could grow, that could grow into, or some, how, how do you want to say that? Right now it says convenient camp store in parentheses, retail goods. So can we update well, when, that? When you go to the value, you can add the value. Ah, oh, the okay, oh, there you go, there you go, yeah, of course. So provides, uh, or not, pro, uh, uh, opportunity. I, just, I don't know if that's, I, I think we need to go into potentially like, uh, so if you look at sales channels, how do we reach potential customers to communicate our value proposition and lead them to become customers? It's kind of like we axed that out, but that's kind of what Richard's talking about in a way, like what are future potential uses of it? But I don't know that I, that's really our charge as somebody trying what, to narrow down these possibilities. No, no, no. That's not that how I heard it was very different, which is that sure. that uh, one of the if you look at the list of value propositions, uh, one that we missed is that a much needed, uh, you know, uh, this has the potential of being a much needed uh, uh, general store for South Wellfleet, which, you know, since yeah. the general store closed, we don't have one. Right. Yeah, that's true. So how do we want to say that, uh, state that value proposition? So um, let's see, what do we have right now for that? It's um, uh, so value of problem solved, more opportunities for businesses to house their workforce, maintain a diverse character of, I would say, of town. Um, benefit, oh, yeah. Um, but benefit taxpayers by reducing their tax bill, and then uh, retain. Uh, retail services in South Wellfleet or retail yes. services in South Wellfleet and potentially um, expand, retain and potentially expand retail services. Retain and potentially expand. Uh, well, we, 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 we want to say something about this that that's South Wellfleet does, uh, doesn't have uh, a general store and this has the potential to become, right? So 
retain kind of is it kind of is a general store serving that purpose right now in the summer okay. whether okay. it's used by the general public i use i go in there because it's close to my house you know yeah. so i do i do go in there from time yeah. to time and it's it is if kind of a general store because of the camping stuff but if it uh, is yeah if it's financially uh, a good thing then does it have to be uh, synced with the timing of the campground can it be open year round because if it's not open year round, then the value proposition diminishes quite a bit. That's why I wrote potentially expand. Yes, okay. that's good. Yes. Retail and yeah. Yeah, because we're retaining it right now. If it, if we close if the campground closed and sold to a developer and the camp store closed, we would lose a major retail location in in South okay. Wales. So retain and potentially expand uh, retail. Uh, is, uh, do you want to say the retail location in South Wellfleet or do you want to say general store in South Wellfleet? How about retain general store? Retail. Retain and potentially expand general store in South Wellfleet. Uh, uh, or did, was there something different You how you said it? I, I'm not sure how to say it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we can fine tune it, uh, but I will, I will show you what I have for value proposition again, the whole thing. Um, okay. And the indentation is a little wonky, but. Maybe we should just take out general store. Okay. Right, retail. Okay. Expand. Retail. Well, just leave it. I think that's good actually. Yeah, it is serving as a general store. Yeah, retail is kind of ambiguous. Like, is it? it, it you know, people might think we want to open a T-shirt shop or something. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah All right. So enough of those. <laughs> well, unless it makes a lot of money. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, okay. I think that's good. So we, we, where we're down to is cost structure and revenue, uh, and how are we doing on time? We're... Uh, let's see, what are we at? Uh, it's 8.12. Um, let's try and do, let's... Uh, are you guys okay with continuing for a little bit longer? I'm okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. So like the first meeting, we've really had been able to sort of delve into anything besides just the finance stuff. So yeah, yeah. It'd be nice That's to kind good. of just feel like an accomplishment. <laughs> um, so, what are the costs to deliver our business model? Um, Cost. I don't. Do you think they mean the actuals, or are they asking? Do you think like? I think this is the. Yeah, it's basically, what are the things that are that costs uh, that that are the operating cost of the place, right? So maybe this is something that we don't answer tonight. Right. I think we need to look into those uh, documents. That. Yeah, and okay. then look at what are fixed. So that's revenue stream is easy. Revenue stream is easy. Yes, Michael. If we yep. own this property, there are then no property taxes. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. No so that's a reduction in what they currently have for operating costs. Uh, yes, but also a reduction to the town in the general ledger of an. I got that, town. but I think the advantages are the services we're providing for housing and whatever else yeah. offsets that tax loss. Right. So that'd be part of the cost structure, I guess. That yes. They property. Yeah. Tax. So that yeah. that's something we should put in there, but it is lost. In, that, property that's the ledger of their their costs um, tax that they revenue. submitted their profit and loss. So, yeah. so in the cost structure, lost property tax revenue from site. Yeah, well, I think actually, if we're looking at it, the business side, it would be actually uh, a a reduction in costs. A reduction. Yes. How the campground because doesn't have to pay property tax. Would, would lose that cost, that overhead cost, as a. Oh, hang on. So, uh, which which way am I... Richard, here's the thing too: is that if, if that that does make sense on one level, but at the same time, if we lease it to someone, then 
their their costs of uh, of paying. Yes, I got that. Yes, would, would sort of encompass. Yes, whatever that may be. But yeah, when we look at the cost structure, let's look at that. See where it fits in the property tax thing. Can you want to take a note on there? Property tax dot dot question mark under okay. cost structure. <laughs> Because I think we do need to look at that and see. Yeah. Well, how we present it ultimately. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I got that. And then, because we don't want to lose sight of what we're actually, the goal of what we're doing, which is actually just to sort of like figure out the operational, what operational plan makes the most sense. Which costs are fixed, variable, and which can be reduced, but okay. So we can look at that and take a deeper dive, I think, not tonight. Mm -hmm. Like we can yeah. all look at the numbers if we can and and kind of maybe we can have an in-person meeting at some point to uh I don't know, just to sort of sometimes I think when we're just like going back and forth about numbers, it makes sense to actually just look at sheets of paper together, but maybe we can just print out the sheets of paper and all of them. <laughs> I don't know. I just went through a whole town budget a million times. With, <laughs> I guess I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> but uh, we should spend some time looking at the those numbers and how they relate to the cost structure, though, prior yeah. to meeting again. Okay, revenue streams. How and when do we get paid by the customers? Um, I would say we would get paid prior to arrival, right? I would think so. Um, and so payments prior to or, or prior to or upon arrival right okay um, I, I guess it's yeah both yeah. prior to or upon check-in yeah yeah okay um is there oh the store um so at point of retail. Yeah. Point of retail revenues. Mm -hmm. So okay. then when it comes to what is our pricing, that's also a question uh, that I should sort of bring to um, bring to Marty or John about what their price structure is now, because we're gonna need that. Mm. basic information whether we lease it out or create an rfp because you know people will be able to see based on their profit and loss and their what they're charging whether there's room for revenue growth in the town as well so i'll i'll get that print out from them or whatever it is that they charge on a nightly mm. and seasonally we know we know the the seasonal rental things is in what's what's um, what's been provided to us, but what we don't know is like their nightly rate for um, the cabins and stuff like that. I don't think we have that. Right. Well, I think this is a great start. Yeah. Um, I should say I went to Friday's general meeting. Yes. And. Um, the big thing they want us to sort of push on is that that scope of work. But I, I think Harry sent it to like three accountants or four accountants and you know, one yeah. said, got back and said nothing. Um, but I, I think we might just be able to, I mean, he might be looking into a campground consultant to just sort of look over those numbers. So I don't know, but that, that seems to be the, the focus on our group at that meeting is they want to know like, oh, are these I numbers? Know, but, but all we could do is issue the scope of work and send out the uh, request for quotes because we basically put together what people wanted us to ask. Right. And then we can't answer those questions. That's why we asked them. So, yeah. well, we can, we can actually answer them, but we need to provide the sort of backing of somebody who, I mean, if you look at the numbers, it's fairly obvious, you know, what you can tease out kind of, you know, verifiable profit um, through the numbers they provided. But, you know, we're presenting this to taxpayers. They, they want to have 
an independent uh, verification, not just this group. So, yeah. um, so like it, I, the scope of work is not that big, but I think looking at the RFQ, it looks larger than it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think if somebody were to actually take a look at the numbers and what's been provided, I, I you know, what, really I've been in contact with Harry a little bit about, you know, uh, I sent him the, the list that came from uh, one of the fin FinCom members, Kathy Grandland. Um, I got all the uh, contact information for them, sent it to Harry, and then Harry sent all those RFQs off. And I'm, I'm not sure if anyone's responded. And then I, I also reached out to Rich Bienvenue in East Ham to see if he'd be interested in working independently. He hasn't gotten back to me, so I'm not sure um, okay. where, where we are with that. But I'll, I'll certainly reach out to Harry again and see if he's heard back. Um, but but we did issue the RFQ, so um, mm -hmm. that that was our 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 charge to do that. So I think it's just you know finding somebody who will do it, and they do, we don't need three quotes. We just need to have reached at least three people and have someone agree to do it. Yeah. You know? So that that's it. And, you know, we'll find that. Uh, I I just don't know if it's going to meet the timeline, um, but the timeline for the <laughs> The timeline for the uh, profit and loss for due diligence doesn't, to me, it's not the end all because we still want to know this information. We still, the town can still reject it at town meeting. So there's not like, if we miss this date of June, it's been extended, I think to June 30th or something like that, 28th. Yeah. If we miss this date on the finance stuff and we get to town meeting, we still have the contingency of, a, of a, a positive vote at town meeting and a ballot question. Right. So it's not as if this sort of like locks us into, you know, not meeting that timeline. We still have the opportunity to review the financials. The, the Gothia brothers have been, you know, really willing to provide, you know, whatever information and whatever they can do to help help things along. So I think, you know, the date is a little bit arbitrary in that, you know, the town still has an opportunity to reject it. So, right. Um, if we, uh, yes, if, if in August 10th, we are not comfortable, then we won't be recommending it, of course. Right, exactly. So, so uh, yeah, I think that's a little bit, like we set the, we, we set the, um, just for some background, basically the, the contingencies on the purchase with the due diligence. And then, you know, we say what we want to do for due diligence. Then their lawyer says, here's the date you have to do due diligence by. Um, and that's what triggers the sort of, we need to do this by this and that. But essentially the real date for due diligence um, is the town meeting vote. Right. You know, I mean, when we get to town meeting, we obviously want to have our ducks in a row. So we present things to voters that they have as much information as we can provide them. But um, but I'm more concerned with getting it done than getting it done by June 28th because it doesn't really change that much. Because I don't think the town's going to walk away or uh, we can't walk away from it without having a town meeting vote anyway. You know, right. that's, that's part of the deal. So we'll, we'll get there. I'm sure of that. <laughs> you know, Michael, one of the things that would help is if we individually approach people who are opposed to this and sell them on the fact that this is our last opportunity to provide any housing in the town of Wealthy. We don't have a, another piece of land of this size uh, yeah. in this town. And it's, you have kids, I have grandkids, where are they going to live? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there really is. And not only that, I mean, what kind of town are we going to be when there's no one to work you know exactly i mean it, it, it's really it's a the housing thing's a real detriment to it, it uh, is people think of it in 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 one way but it's now gotten to the point where actually if you are a business owner or if you care about having a local economy at all you're dependent on having places for people to live to work in the economy otherwise you know, we, we can't, people can't stay open. There's, 
they just they're having that problem now we have an aging population too so you know there's also you know that whole issue where you know my my mom takes care of like elderly people and you know she's she's aging she's you know she's not going to be able to do that work forever and you know are there people who live here that can sort of take that role on also you know um so you know there's this yeah. There's a whole host of issues related to housing that this is, you know, you're right. The charge of this group is really about operations. And the charge right. of the main group, uh, the communications group, which is another sub working group, Richard, um, is working on that sort of stuff. So Sharon Agger, right? Lara, is it Sharon and, and um, who's Sharon, on Sarah Pachukas, and Heather Doyle, and um, Joan Zukas. Yeah. Good. I guess what I was just saying is we individually have to confront people who we know don't think this is a good idea and say, listen, where are we going as a town? What is the future of our town? Are we going to be just uh, homeowners who are here three, three weeks a year and rent their house the rest of the time and it's empty all winter? Or are we going to be a viable, wealthy town? Yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay, yes. so I think um, we're we're kind of at a stopping point here. It seems like to me, um, I can get the pricing structure on what they price things at. I mean, I think the store is kind of like arbitrary. I don't really want to delve into their retail pricing in the store. It's just you know, I know they sell a lobster roll for pretty affordable. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Very popular, yes. Uh, so I think I'm going to stop sharing this, I think. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. yes. And and uh, do you guys want to look over the notes? Or just Should I just send it? It's I kind of... Send a, it, yeah. Just yeah. send it. Okay. All right, just I'll do that it. right now. Um, do you want to now very quickly, we can just bring up the uh, form that Nancy had submitted before. Nancy, can you share screen? Um, uh, um, let me see. I, I just, I think I re-emailed it to you on yeah, a PDF. Yeah, you did. I, did, I, didn't, uh, I didn't look at it yet, um, but I can open that if you want. And... Sure. Okay, let me just get that my email and then I'll share it. But you know, Farik and I will look at the um, work we did today and see how we can. Yeah, online. I think sort before the meeting ends, maybe we'll just bring it up on screen and yeah, a quick look at it as a group and see if there's anything we want to know we want to add to it, and then that'll be our subject for our our next meeting. And I'm supposed to meet with Score again, and then hopefully they'll come meet with the group. If it seems necessary, but um, let's see. Share screen. Um, I sent the email, by the way. Okay. And okay, is that good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. The night test. Yeah. Sorry. Can we increase so, the. Is it you sharing, Nancy? Control plus. That's maybe? me sharing. So uh, it's small. Okay. Is it tiny? Yeah, for an old guy, yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, you can also adjust how big our little faces are and how big the document is. There's a little slide bar on the side. I think the problem is here that I've got a PDF open. It's, and yeah, there you go, plus, okay. Uh, but then, uh, okay. Does it shrink again? That's, that's good that's, enough. That's I'll, good I'll enough. manage, yeah, good I enough. Go yeah. There, uh, does that work? This is, yeah, good this is fine. Yeah. Okay. I can't tell what it looks like for everyone else. So um, I think, do we want to add a fourth option on there? Or do we just assume that if it's running, if the whole thing is running? Simpler um, model is, is simpler for modeling. And if the reality is that the store is you know, quite profitable, then I, I don't know that we want to have a more complex uh, analysis and model when, you know, 
that's not likely to be a possibility. I mean, so I, I don't know that uh, I don't have the data, but if you guys happen to know what, you know, is the pro, uh, low, medium, high, there's the store just barely profitable, you know, moderately prof profitable, very profitable. It's, it's moderate. It's moderately. I mean, the camping is, you know, 80% or 90% of the profit or income. Okay. So the, a lot of the rest is the store. Then that's, that's significant. Maybe it's I a, can look, we can lift it as a criteria, you know, add the store to it. And that would mean if, if we're leasing it, there would probably be different um, language on the lease agreement, whether they run the store or not in terms of how much they would pay for that lease. Right. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that I, the only reservation I have about not having it in there is just because it's essentially what the town agreed to do in the mm -hmm. purchase and sale is to run that seasonal aspects to it. And I think we could spell out the cons of not doing that. You know what I mean? Um, but it does complicate things a little bit in the way that we would have to tease out the sort of profit from the store, which I don't think because of their way that they keep their, uh, the, the Employees uh, fluid, the labor distribution, it's difficult to, because like, if there's, if you don't have the store, the labor goes down, it becomes more complicated to sort of determine Right. I think if uh, the, the store, uh, you know, in operating the store is not uh, proportionally as much bigger a demand on resources. And when you have that fluid employee model between the store and the campground, uh, yeah. it seems very worth it. My, my personal uh, suggestion is that we keep our analysis and our models sim simple by saying that yeah. in all cases, you know, the, the store is part of the picture. So if you're operating the campground as a lessee, you get the store. If you are, up, uh, um, you know, a management company, you manage the store, but the store is just, you know, it's like two sides of the coin. You've got the campground, you've got the store, but otherwise, if you look at the permutations, you know, there's the three business models plus the, you know, four combinations, well, if you rule out the zero, zero, that you're not running the campground, you know, so you've, you've got, you're always running the campground and you may or may not run the stores. That's three possibilities. So right. it's like at least nine different combinations. That yeah, you're up. right. I think this is, I think you're right. Okay. You've talked me down. Um, the one thing that they suggested at SCORE was that we change the, um, the order of these things and put operation one as operation three. I mean, option option one as option three. Um, okay. Yeah. They just thought that it made more sense to look at them in that order. So lease lease is uh, one and management company is two. Yeah, and then yeah. three would be the town operating it. And the, yeah. and I agree with that because the then the in the under the new order. It's the least headache for the town versus right. increasingly more headache, right? Right. Yeah. The uh, okay. store is not open as much as the campground is. The store is, is very limited seasonal. The campground operates much more in the shoulder seasons when the store is closed. Is that correct? Yeah, especially lately. I, in the last few years, that's definitely been the case. Um, yeah. But I think the store used to open Memorial Day and close at the end. I, I think they used to run the shoulder seasons in the store much yeah. more than they do now. But I, that's the way I remember it anyways. You know. And is that the case because it's not as profitable in those shoulder seasons? I think it's the case because they don't have enough staff in the shoulder seasons. And, uh, yeah. and, and, and not just that, but they're, they're sort of winding down too. So it's sure. like the... Mm -hmm. The shoulder season is definitely not as profitable as peak season. So, you know, if you don't although to... increasingly in wealthy shoulder seasons are becoming more popular. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, 
there's potential there for, for more yes, revenue. Yes, there is. You know, I know that they were really hit hard with staff shortage for over mm -hmm. whatever. Um, okay, well, I think, are you guys good with this? And we should all just take a look at this again uh, before we meet again. And do you guys want to set a meeting time up while we're all here um, on a Monday? Um, I've said struggle because I'm on the Affordable Housing Trust too. And we don't have like a steady schedule of meetings, but we meet on Mondays also. So um, I feel like I should just like text Harry all the time and ask when our next meeting is because I never know. Um, I know on the 26th, Frederick and I will be out of town. Okay. But we might have Wi-Fi if it's a Zoom meeting. Yeah, well, we'll just keep up Zoom meetings from now on. I mean, for now, anyway. So the 26th, you'll be out back on the 27th or out for that week? We're out the 22nd to the 29th. Okay, so maybe let's just skip ahead. Well, then we're talking 4th of July. Uh, maybe we could just meet a different day of the week. I don't know what works for people. Um, we, maybe we'll keep the ball rolling and... And yeah, find the date that works for you. We will try to do it by Zoom, wherever we are. Yeah, let me just see if I have a, a housing trust meeting in my email so I know what day that is. Am I sharing my screen right now still? No. Stop sharing. Uh, what do you guys have? Uh, hmm? I want to suggest a date to decide that I don't know. I'm tired. Um, Town meeting exhausted me. <laughs> um, don't think we've set one up yet so um yeah let's just let's just do it on a monday we can do it either do you want to do it next monday the 20th next monday and then skip a couple weeks because you'll be gone and that even farouk will be gone and then it's fourth of july week and maybe mm. we again on the like the 11th or something after that um i think that's good keep it rolling so that 7 p.m there. Yeah. It works for me, yeah. Okay. You like mm -hmm. saying, I don't think I'll have a housing trust meeting, but let's just let's just schedule for the 20th at seven. Okay. Okay. Sure. All right. Write that down and then I will have Rebecca post it. Okay, and in the meantime, I'll try and meet with John uh, and get those questions answered as well as some other questions from finance committee members. Okay, sounds good. All right, uh, I guess, can I uh, have a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Okay, second? Second, second. Okay, so roll call vote, I guess. Michael, aye. Nancy, aye. Lara, I. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank <laughs> Just you. Trying Thank to be, you. I guess formal. I don't know how formal we're supposed to be, really, but <laughs> we're, we're doing it as best we can. All right. Thank you. Thank you very Have much. Good night. Thank Have you. Good night.